very much for the introduction. As Anthony said, I wanted to talk about Ilias in the rabbit, and I'd like to just put it in context because one of the the common things that I see is that it's treated as a disease in and of itself. But I want to sort of highlight the fact that we need to look a little bit further. And so what I want to do to start with is to go through a little bit of the physiology, the anatomy, how the rabbit gut works, and other very, very obvious clues that we need to pay attention to that can be equally significant in the clinical exam as to looking for a cause of this disease. So the anatomy of the rabbit GIT is very, very similar in some ways to the more familiar species. Obviously, we have the oral cavity, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine. And then it starts to get a little bit more advanced. And it's really um, an evolutionary strategy to deal with a poor diet. So after the small intestine, we have the ileocolic valve. And that is very, very important in the production of the cecotrophs. We have the massively important cecum, which is about a third of the gut volume. We then go to the proximal large intestine, and then the key to it all, the hormonally controlled fusus coli. That controls the, the functioning and the motility of the gut and what is being produced at what time during the day. And then the distal large intestine, whose function is very, very similar to um, the colon in other species. So I thought that I would just show some very basic um, views so that you can appreciate slightly the differences in anatomy. And if you have access to it, I would um, highly suggest that you either look at Pesco, which um, this is a Czech book, but there is an English version um, available from the RCVS library, or Baroni, um, which is an older anatomy book to just really check up on the anatomy. And I just wanted to highlight here that that is the cecum, and we've got the small intestine and the large intestine going around and down. And on this side, this is the other part of the cecum. And you can see that unusually for, uh, you know, compared with most species, part of the gut is actually spanning almost both sides of the abdomen. And so you can imagine that when that is full, when you palpate this animal, you should be able to feel it as full. And when this is empty for whatever reason, the abdomen is very, very tucked up and thin, and it's very, very noticeable quite rapidly, and particularly if the motility um, has been abnormal and the emptying has occurred and refilling hasn't, then the animal will become very, very, as I say, thin and tucked up and empty feeling very, very rapidly. So I wanted to just highlight um, the ileocecocolic complex and this is the small intestine, the ileocolic valve and the cecum and the importance of this obviously um, is, is twofold. The ileocolic valve is very important when the animal is um, usually sort of producing normal droppings and eating is occurring, this valve is open, allowing gut content to flow from the small intestine through the valve into the cecum and large intestine. Now, during the production of cecotrophs, this valve is closed so that when reverse peristalsis is occurring and the, the small sort of potentially digestible parts of the diet are being elevated almost back up the proximal large intestine into the cecum for fermentation, it stops these gut contents refluxing back into the small intestine. So in and of itself, it is quite an important structure. And to just highlight sort of, once again, the size and scope of the cecum, which is massive 
in this animal. 